The Big Small Business Show is made possible by MTN Business. Welcome to the new world of business and the South African Institute of Chartered Accountants, developing responsible business leaders. A warm welcome to the Big Small Business Show. On our menu today, in our Psyche of Success slot, we have a, a slightly different approach. We have uh, Steph Vermeulen, and she'll be talking to us um, about uh, the concept of EQ in, in your business and why it's important for us as entrepreneurs to understand and have a healthy EQ. Our panel discussion today is with Natasha Henning from Brand Navigator, and she'd like our advice on how to to spread uh, risk in her business as she's starting to expand one of her divisions but needs the other division to keep going to sh ensure financial stability. Or does she? We'll find out. And then Ronnie Aptieka joins me to discuss the value of old-fashioned talking as opposed to texting or typing. That's it for today, so enjoy. <music> IQ, which is intelligence quotient, is an intelligence score based on standardized tests. Now EQ, emotional quotient or emotional intelligence, can be tested but is better measured in life by a person's ability to feel, communicate, describe, identify and learn from their own mistakes. These are all character traits entrepreneurs should not only have but develop on an ongoing basis. Now joining me today in studio is Steph Vermeulen, author of a new book called Personal Intelligence, Future Fit Now. Welcome, Steph. Thanks, Alon. Okay. Glad to be here. Now, we go back a long way. We, we were in a class together some 12 odd years ago. At and, least 12 years ago, and, yes. And you were, then you were talking about another book. So this is not your first book, right? No. The first book on emotional intelligence was launched in 1999. I started working with it in 1996. So that was just very shortly after the first book was launched in America. And purely because it made more sense than anything that had preceded it. So there was a lot of the seven habits and all of that at the time, but everybody seemed to be ignoring the emotions. Now, we know from psychology that if you're emotionally off whack, no matter how intelligent you are, you're not going to be able to apply yourself. And particularly, the, one of the problems is, is gaining other people's cooperation, mm. which is what entrepreneurs need to be doing all the time. So that book was launched in 1999 and that was long before Google, before the internet, before there was any information at all. So it was launched in a completely different world mm. and now science has actually, in this millennium, has actually been looking a lot into the brain, the thinking mind, the emotions, what they do and we can see that there's lots of scientific proof now for the basis of emotional intelligence. Okay, so, so the old adage about it's not what you know, it's who you know, has become more real because the, under, the underpinning activity around who you know is building relationships, right? Yes. It's more than who you know, it's what you do with those relationships. So if you're relying on your black book or your network or to support you, but you're behaving really badly around that, then your network is going to give up on you. So it's about building relationships. And in business, I always talk about that it's not about liking somebody. You don't need to like them to be able to work with them. And in our very diverse world, there's huge advantage in hearing lots of different opinion from lots of different people who come from different walks of life and in that diversity sometimes we clash because we don't really understand one another and it's not about liking each other or socializing together or anything like that that helps but it's not an, it's not a necessity it's more about functional relationships or building functional relationships which are relationships at work that work and if you can make your relationships work whether you like the person or not is irrelevant but if you need them for to cooperate operate with you so that you can be successful, then you're likely to set aside those personal stereotypes or whatever judgments that you're making so that you can get on with getting to know the person. And more often than not, when we get to know each other, we end up liking each other anyway. Now this, this show is about uh, small business, about entrepreneurship. What are the characteristics that uh, entrepreneurs 
need to have, the, the EQ characteristics we, we need to have in order to succeed? I think one of the, the biggest areas is about self-control and lots of people think that gaining other people's cooperation is about them, that they're not cooperative, that we can't get you know them to, to move or anything like that, but it's about how we approach everybody. So the self-control side of emotional intelligence is really important. What, what do you mean by that? Managing my own emotions, that if I'm in a bad mood, that I need to regulate that mood uh, in a very genuine way. Uh, now in the back of my ego, EQ book and this personal intelligence book, there's an emotional dictionary. Because what we know about emotions now from science is that emotions literally run the traffic from our thinking brain to our physical body. Mm. And they do, do so through the, the, the system of hormones, mm. which is brain chemistry living in your body. Now, when that traffic is running smoothly, we feel that sensation is called happiness, which is about our well-being. And when we feel that, it's much easier to relate to people or to gain their cooperation. It's when we're not so comfortable, we're highly stressed, our hormonal system is different, so the traffic flow is running differently. Mm. And that's when our behavior tends to regress to much younger behavior. So we may lose our temper or we may withdraw and sulk, which really isn't going to get us the deal or mm. isn't going to get us to get our staff to cooperate with us. So that's what I mean by regulating okay. is your emotion. Is Give us another one. Give us another one. So frustration for example. Frustration can happen when we can't make things happen. Mm -hmm. So frustration is just telling us that we need to change something, whatever that might be. So we might need to change our expectation, our strategy, the way we're going about negotiating, which is a critical skill in terms of being an entrepreneur, because we need to negotiate everything and mm -hmm. we need to keep negotiating everything. Mm -hmm. And that's how we get, get our own way or make things happen, make success happen. So frustration can tell us it it's either telling us that we need a new challenge, so mm. perhaps the business has gotten stuck, for example, mm. or we've been flogging the same old thing over and over in the old ways of marketing, and now we need to start looking for new ways of doing things. So all emotions are very helpful messages telling us the truth about what's going on in our own lives. Mm. So we can use them as guidelines mm. all the time. And it, we That's need such a nice frame. I just want to stop you there because I think you've, you've said something very, very um, important, is that you, what, what you've done now is framed emotions as feedback tools yes. for, uh, for you to use in order to change your own behavior or, sh or change the context. Am yes. I right? And that is all emotions are. Emotions only tell us about our own behavior. So you may be the source of my frustration because you're blocking me or not cooperating with me but it's what I do with that so if I keep on screaming and yelling at you it's may going to make us further and further apart in our position but if I use that feedback and the feedback of frustration is then to change something I can change the way that I am negotiating with you so in negotiation emotions are critical tools because I'm working with my own feedback all the time and I can read your emotions the same way. So for example, if you start getting angry, if we're negotiating and you start getting angry, it's a very clear message to me that you feel like I'm trying to compromise you. Mm. You're not able mm. to get your priorities met or your needs met or whatever the, the, the source is. And then through negotiation, we can work with that. When I totally ignore your emotions, mm. then we're both going to walk away, we'll probably end up having a need to be right argument where nobody's going to win, we're not hearing one another, and we walk away from the situation both feeling the, the same frustration. Steph, a, a, a very uh, often asked question in, in this space with entrepreneurs is the, the concept of self-confidence and self-esteem. Yes. Could you tell us the difference between the two and why is one more important than the other, if at okay. all? Okay. Since about the 70s, there's been this big drive in the world around self-esteem. Now, self the self-esteem movement has told us that we need to love ourselves. Now, I know plenty of successful entrepreneurs who are far more successful than I am and earn far more money than I do, and not one of them will tell you or me that they got there because of loving themselves. Mm. So it's a bit of trite nonsense, or it's become trite nonsense 
existence in terms of this imp the importance of loving yourself it causes us a lot of problems because we think well you know but I don't love myself so uh, most successful people have actually gotten to where they've gotten to because of their in their insecurities mm. so I know when I started training in the 90s I didn't know anything about training I had a background in psychology but I was feeling terribly insecure about what I was doing because I hadn't had the experience yet so I told myself if I just knew more than my delegates then I'd be okay so my drive for knowledge was that oh, I, I learned a lot more after university than I ever learned at university but my drive for knowledge was came directly out of feeling insecure in the situation I was in. So being insecure can drive you to gain more and more knowledge, more and more experience, to learn from your experiences, to become resilient, which is essential for, for entrepreneurs because you're on your own and you don't have people who can mop up the, you know, the, the tragedies that happen along the way. You've got to do it yourself. You've got to learn to bounce back. So self-confidence is often born from insecurities that I'm not so comfortable comfortable with this but I know if I just do more of it and I keep doing it and I keep learning from my mistakes I will be confident in terms of my abilities okay. so it's an ability driven rather than this broad general notion that heaven only knows where it came from that we need to love ourselves okay. and the problem with the movement of loving oneself is we're teaching it to children and when we teach children that I'm special because I'm me they're actually now the research is showing the the research Church in America, we have the same ditties here. Nursery school kids are singing, I'm special because I'm me. Those things are producing narcissists. Now, narcissists. I, I, think, I think this requires a whole session on itself. So we've run out of time. I'm going to ask you to come back into the studio. I'd be and delighted. Let's, and let's just talk about this, this issue. I think it's a very important issue. It's a critical yeah. issue today. Stephanie, thanks for, for coming on the show. I'll see Alan, you, thank see you, you. soon. Up next is uh, Natasha Henning from Brand Navigator, and she joins us uh, in the panel. Her company consists of three divisions, and she'd like our advice on how to spread her risk whilst focusing on the development of one particular div division. Do stay tuned.